Hi everyone and welcome to the One Mom's Battle YouTube channel. I am Tina Swithin. If you haven't already subscribed to our page, please make sure you do. That way you'll get notified anytime we post a new video or have new content. Um, I also go live every Saturday morning for Coffee with Tina at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and I answer questions live time. So um, please join me every Saturday morning for that. Um, today's episode, I want to direct to those who are still in domestic violence situations, still living in the home, and during this COVID-19 pandemic, you are unfortunately quarantined with your abuser. Um, it's something that we are we are seeing a huge uptick in domestic violence cases, um, child sexual abuse, child abuse. Um, my heart goes out to you. I want to acknowledge you, let you know that I see you, I hear you, I validate what you're going through, and I'm so incredibly sorry. Um, I did have somebody who submitted some questions to me today about this topic, and because it's been a topic that is so heavy on my heart right now, um, and I know that there's more than just this one person experiencing this, I wanted to take a minute to um, address these questions with the hopes that it can help others. Um, I do want to say I'm not an attorney. I'm not a mental health professional. I am just somebody who understands a heck of a lot about narcissism and strategy and co-parenting and 10 years in the family court system, um, I believe qualifies me. Um, and I acted as my own attorney during that time. So while I cannot give legal advice and you ultimately need to run any decisions or um, any new strategies that you're going to implement past your attorney, um, I am happy to share with you my experience. Um, one of the questions that came through, how do I legally get him out of my house um, before filing for divorce when his abuse is so hidden? Um, that is such a, a difficult question to answer. And every situation is so different with so many variables. I don't know what type of abuse we're talking about. Um, I encourage you to be journaling um, every single day and documenting the abuse and, you know, escalating that to, you can take a screenshot of it with your phone, send it to an attorney daily um, or to a close friend or family member. So it's also stored off site in case your journal is discovered. Um, but you, you know, if, if you're in danger, if there is physical abuse going on, um, be journaling, be documenting everything that you're enduring and be careful. If you feel that you are not safe, please reach out to a domestic violence shelter. Um, there's 1-800 numbers, there's, there's local shelters available. Um, I know that I never would have guessed that I would end up in a women's shelter in 2009, but I did. And it was one of the best decisions I've made. It was also some of the most humbling days of my life. So my heart is with you on that. Um, what are the most important things I should be doing while I still have time and he doesn't know I'm going to file for divorce? start creating a financial picture of your world. Um, so many of these guys, the financial abuse dynamic is so intense. Um, so take photographs of every single document, um, bank account, retirement account, anything that you can get access to while you're still in the house and send it off site again to a friend, to a family, to a Dropbox account, something that's not stored in, you know, in your home on your electronic devices, because I, I worry about those being confiscated. Um, in addition to the journaling, you know, those are, those are some good starting points. Um, any other documents that are important, birth certificates, passports, um, anything like that, 
I recommend keeping an emergency bag packed in your trunk so that if you needed to leave on a moment's notice, um, you have those important documents and you know, keep it in your trunk and you can just hop in the car and go. Um, I just helped a mom, you know, this past week who fled while her abuser was taking a nap. And, you know, sometimes those are the decisions that we have to make very last minute. Um, how important is it to have an attorney who understands NPD and how do I find one? Um, start with friends or family members, colleagues, people who have been through this type of journey um, or who can recommend uh, very, you know, respected um, but strong attorneys in your area. Um, your therapist is a great person to connect with, to ask who she knows, if she has clients um, who just absolutely love their attorney. You know, what I find is very few attorneys actually understand narcissistic personality disorder, but at a minimum, having an attorney who understands domestic violence, um, because so many of the components are similar, you know, the need for power, the need for control, um, the, the need to win, the post-separation abuse that goes along with that. Um, you know, asking, you know, some, some hard questions of the attorney, you know, what has been your experience with clients who, whose cases were built on emotional abuse or psychological abuse? You know, does the court, do you, have you ever been successful in winning a case, um, you utilizing those things? And, and a lot of people will tell you, you know, no, the courts don't recognize that, you know, I beg to differ. I, you know, my case, I was self-represented and I won my case largely on emotional and psychological abuse. So is it a marathon? But yeah, but can it be done? You know, asking them, you know, in what situation do you feel that two people are not equally responsible for the conflict? Um, you know, do you understand you know, not just narcissistic personality disorder, but the dynamics and, you know, the experiences of survivors who have endured um, narcissistic abuse. You know, what are your thoughts on that topic? You know, you've got a lot of attorneys out there who use words like high conflict or narcissist on their website to draw traffic to it, but then they're going to, you know, almost demean you or laugh at you when you try to bring that up. Um, you know, there is a hard truth that they can't go in and argue to the court that this is a narcissist. There's realities to it. Um, you, you know, having somebody who is trauma informed, having somebody who understands domestic violence at a minimum ensures that they will um, validate your need for strong boundaries, understand your need for a very tight parenting plan with little room for, you know, loopholes, gray areas, because we all know the narcissist thrives in those areas and and also understand um, the importance of strategic communication when you're going up against someone like this. So a lot of people, you know, they think that having an attorney who understands narcissism is that they're going to run in the courtroom and, and try to argue that that's not realistic, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, you're keeping in mind that the world of attorneys, um, that's an arena with a very high level of narcissistic traits, if not full-blown narcissism. Um, so you have to, you know, gauge where you are in your healing process. My guess is if you're still in the home, you barely even begin. But, you know, how triggered are you going to be? Somebody who I would consider to be just an amazing attorney may not be a good fit for you. Um, I'm further along in my healing process. So somebody who's highly narcissistic, uh, you know, I'm not going to have as big of an issue with that as somebody who is just freshly out of that type of relationship. Um, one of the other questions that came through, um, did you teach your children about narcissism or, you know, understanding the language of the narcissist? She mentioned narc decoding, um, which is a book I wrote. No, um, you know, my 
stance has always been that it's not my job. You know, my job, if my children come home and talk about anyone's abusive behavior, whether it's a bully on the playground or um, a family member, validate their feelings, validate their experience, uh, let them know that I'm listening, that I care, that what happened to them is not okay. Um, talk to them about what's in their toolbox, how they can handle situations like that. But I'm a firm believer, well, you have more leeway to talk about strategies and angles when you're dealing with a bully on the playground than when it's their own parent, because then you're under the microscope of the family court system and it's highly frowned upon. Um, but for me, I would never talk to my kids about their father um, in those ways. Um, you know, I believe that when they connect the dots on their own and realize that this the other parent isn't healthy or, you know, is abusive, it's so much more powerful than anything I could ever say to them. Um, I've always allowed my kids to come to their own decisions on who their dad is. And that's between the two of them. You know, that's me realizing what I don't have control over and taking a step back. Um, for me, a lot of the way I came through this was recognizing that there were a lot of things beyond my control and that my kids were on their own journeys. You know, nature intended for me to protect them, but my hands were tied in a lot of areas. One of those is the family court system. And so, you know, accepting the fact that I can do everything in my power to protect them, but I don't have full control. And, and I am literally tied from acting as I would if anybody else were treating my children the way my ex-husband did. So that's a, it's a hard topic. That one could be a whole hour conversation in itself. Um, do any of your clients have both a husband or a spouse um, and a child with narcissistic traits? That's another really hard topic. Um, do they, you know, in, in all of the clients and coaching consulting work that I do? Yes, I'm sure that there are some kid or adult children who are diagnosable. Um, the problem that I have going that direction, we have our own triggers and it's really important to look at this from a logical standpoint. You know, if you have a 13 year old child who's acting out and behaving like a narcissist, some of that is just pretty common for a 13 year old. It doesn't mean you're allowed to be their emotional or physical um, punching bag. You're allowed to have your own boundaries and say, you know what, when you said that, that was not okay with me. And I'm gonna need to go take a time out and practice self care um, because that hurt my feelings and and I'm not okay with it. So I'm gonna remove myself and I'd like to sit down and talk about it later, but not right now. Um, you know, and, and one of the things um, that I know a lot of us are very quick to do is when we are triggered, um, connect those dots that it must be because our child you know, genetics are strong, let's admit that. Um, the child is 50% the other parent. So will there be characteristics that seep through and bleed into this? Yes, um, but automatically jumping to that point, um, you know, I think teenage years, even under the best of circumstances, are really, really hard. And so, you know, being careful that that's not automatically where you jump and that you're looking at this from um, a, a healthy stance and perspective. Um, but again, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now. If you are in an abusive situation right now, please reach out to the domestic violence hotline if you feel that you are in danger in any way or call your local domestic violence resource center. Um, my heart is with you, my prayers are with you. And um, yeah, take care, take care of yourself. Lots of self-care and, and be safe out there.